Hi everyone, today I'm going to talk about methods to study atomistic diffusion. So if you're new to computational chemistry and wonder which method of atomistic diffusion will suit your system, I'm here to help you. So after a brief description of what diffusion is and what microscopic diffusion is, I'm going to describe three methods that are used to study diffusion in solid states and I'm going to review the good and the bad about them so that you can choose for yourself. Now, what is diffusion? Diffusion is a process of movement of molecules from the region of their high concentration in the system to the region of their low concentration until their concentration is homogeneous in the system. What I mean by that is atoms molecules or particles, they always move from where they are high in concentration to where their concentration is low until they are evenly distributed. Now, all the techniques to study diffusion, they are grounded on fixed law. Fixed law describes the direction and driving force for the movement of particles in a system. Um, it describes the flux of the particle movement in terms of concentration gradient. So here in this image, you can see Jx is the flux of particles in x dimension, where they are moving from their higher concentration to their lower concentration. So flux is directly proportional to concentration gradient. The d over here is diffusivity coefficient, and the negative sign indicates the negative slope or the movement of particles from higher concentration to lower concentration. Now, diffusion can vary in liquids, solids, and gases. So this video is for ones who want to study diffusion in solids. So diffusion in solids, atoms diffuse by the means of atomic hops between neighboring lattice sites. So for an atom to move from one place to another, it needs to overcome certain amount of energy. It needs certain energy to move from one location to another. And this energy is called activation energy or energy barrier. So this is usually calculated using Arrhenius equation and Wood and Weinyard in their 1950 paper have described the relation between Gibbs free energy and the frequency of atomic jumps. Uh, I have just discussed the formulas here and for details I will share the link of the paper in the description section below. So here G is the Gibbs free energy of migration, H is the enthalpy of migration, S is the entropy of migration, and V0 is a vibrational frequency in direction of migration. So now, why computational methods are preferred over experimental methods? So in computational uh, methods, we have an advantage over experimental methods. How so? Experimental methods to study diffusion, the atoms are allowed to diffuse in a crystalline solid and then overall diffusivity coefficient is calculated. However, what we don't get to know is how each atom is moving in the system. So using computational methods, we can get the details of interatomic trajectories during the diffusion process. We can understand the impact of lattice imperfection on diffusion of atom. Lastly, uh, the energy required for each atom jump is more uh, clearly understood in computational methods. So what I mean by that is when an atom is diffusing in a solid, the energy required to make a single jump in x dimension will be different from what is needed to make a jump in z dimension or y dimension. Now computational methods give you a clear picture about it. So the same, last point is the same. We get to know the dimensionality of the diffusion. That means sometimes in some crystals, some atoms might be able to diffuse in vertical direction, but not in horizontal, or in horizontal direction, but not in vertical. So these kind of analyses are more clear in computational methods. So the first method to study the computational simulation diffusion was adiabatic trajectory method, ATM. 
It was given by Wang in 1992 to explain zinc diffusion in semiconductors. Now, this method, um, as you can see in the animation, a diffusing atom, the red one here, is moved in one fixed direction with a constant speed. And then all the surrounding parameters and structural atoms are allowed to relax in response to it. What I mean by that is the position, the speed and direction of diffusing atom is kept constant. Now this method might be good to predict the diffusion channels, how the diffusing atom is interacting with the defects, the vacancies. It can be good to understand dimensionality and energy barrier, but it does not really mimic the real setup. Now, in a real setup, atoms are free to diffuse. They are allowed free motion. But here, in this method, atoms are not allowed free diffusion. And this does not mimic the real system. And then lastly, because of the methodology, we do not see the effect, the correct effect of collisions or concentration uh, with the diffusion of the atom. So therefore, uh, in comparison to ATM, the next method, nudge elastic band, NAB, is most commonly used. Uh, in this method, minimum energy path between two states is defined. What we mean by that is the initial position of the atom, which is the energy minima, and a final position of atom, which is another energy minima, is known. And in between that, several images or states are imagined or assumed. And on them, certain forces are relaxed. Now the forces, these forces are F1, which is a true force derived from the potential, and F2 is a spring force. It is a virtual uh, spring force which is connecting the adjacent images. And these images, um, these forces are relaxed using density functional theory. And using this method, the minimum energy path for atom diffusion is determined. So atom to move from one place to another, the path which will require minimum energy is determined. However, this study is based upon two major assumptions. The first is migrating atoms avoid charge densities and therefore migrate with least collisions. So this atom which is diffusing would want to avoid the rest of the atoms of the crystal with charge densities and therefore it tries to move through the path with least number of collisions. Secondly, it takes that non-migrating atoms are static throughout. That means the other, other than the diffusing atom, all the other atoms in the system should be static. Therefore, the study is good for mostly crystals. Now, there are several drawbacks with nudge elastic band that um, the diffusivity of atom is not understood in three, dimension, uh, in three dimensions since it's only giving the idea of one single atom jump. Now, the forces in this method are not conserved and it is computationally expensive because the position of migrating atom must be communicated in all the intermediate images. And also the accuracy of method depends upon the number of images in between. It requires prior knowledge of initial and final structure. And as I mentioned, this method is applicable to crystalline solids only. Now, some of these drawbacks have been overcome in modified and revised NB versions, climbing image nudge elastic band, improved tangent nudge elastic band, and doubly nudge elastic band method. So I'll discuss these method in the videos further, but for now, Papers for reference have been mentioned in the description section below. The last one, mean square displacement, MSD, is the easiest of all method. Um, it does not really target to get diffusion trajectory of one atom alone. It just aims to determine overall diffusivity of species in the system. 
So here, the entire system is allowed to undergo Brownian motion, which is the random motion for longer duration of time. And then mean square displacement is calculated for each time step and related to diffusivity coefficient by einstein smolsky relation. This diffusivity coefficient is then used to calculate energy barrier using Arrhenius equation. Here is an example of mean square displacement. So D here, the system is heated up at different temperatures for longer duration of time. For As you can see here, 15,000 time steps, femtosecond time steps. So the reason the high temperature is preferred because in a computational domain, the time step that we talk about is in the range of picoseconds, femtoseconds, or nanoseconds, which is too small for any phenomena to take place. So we need to speed up the process uh, for computational time frame. So therefore, these are heated at high temperature. The diffusivity coefficient is calculated and then extrapolated to room temperature to get the clear idea. It is to be noted that this high temperature should be below the melting point of the system. Now this method is good to predict diffusion channels and uh, diffusivity of the overall system and understand the effect of parameters like concentration, pressure, temperature, etc. This is good for a morphous system, but it has certain drawbacks, which is, is very computationally expensive since molecular dynamics is done and DFT is performed for each frame. The final, final position is not really defined. So that means if you want to get idea of one single atom jump from one location to another, it needs to be used with nudge elastic band. Then, as I mentioned, it's temperature sensitive, so temperatures you should be below the melting point. So I hope you liked this video and it helped you to select which method to choose for your work. Next week, I'm going to talk about some basics of kinetic Monte Carlo and diffusivity, uh, study of diffusion via KMC. I hope you liked it. If you like and it was useful, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos. Thank you.